So let's talk about what equipment you would need to commission an IMRT program. How would you use film measurements for commissioning of IMRT? Name some of the tests that you would want to use for IMRT commissioning. And then the test on the picture to the right may be the most important. Why is that? And what is this test? So as usual, we will always reference a test group when we can. And so TG119 is the perfect reference for IMRT. So what equipment would you want? So you want a water equivalent phantom. You want to scan that with a CT and allow it to be used within the treatment planning system. You also want a chamber that is smaller than a farmer chamber. So remember, farmer chambers are quite large in the chamber world. And so you would want a chamber something like around 0.125 cc, ideally. And there's plenty of them. And so you would just need to pick up, I think, a CC 13, something similar is the perfect type of chamber that you would want. So now how would you use film measurements? So you can use the water phantom and you can use a chamber, but you can also use film. So if you put a film in the coronal plane and you run tests, you can use gamma analysis to verify the agreement between what is being measured at the linear accelerator and the ideal dose plane, which you would get from your treatment planning system. So this uses the distance to agreement and dose difference. Typically, when we do patient-specific IMRTQA, we use this gamma analysis, and that's something you should know very well. Use 3%, 3 millimeter, get it as best as you can, obviously, and ideally, you want those 95% plus a points passing when you do that gamma analysis. So now what are some tests you would actually want to do? So there are a lot of tests that you can do and you want to range them in terms of difficulty. So start very easy. That way, if something there doesn't look right, it's easily fixed and you don't have a lot of variables and concerns. You know that there are limited things you can change. So for example, let's talk about simply a APPA. So you would, can look at the central dose with a chamber and you can use film for gamma analysis, something just very simple. Then you can do parallel opposed fields. And again, that's still pretty easy. Uh, and again, gamma analysis, you can use a chamber, something just a little more difficult. And then we're going to move up to a multi-target. So. For example, you could have uh, three cylinders of increasing dose. You could have seven fields. You can put them 50 degrees apart, put the chamber isocenter, and you can also use the film to kind of center along the other segments. You could put the film at mid phantom. This is where it's kind of nice, where you do have creativity as a physicist to come up with your own plans. TG119 gives recommendations, but you can make them a little easier or more complex as you see fit. And you're the one creating the plans that are being given. And so that is, that's great. So for example, something I would certainly consider is to have like a band. So say this was the the lengthwise of the film. And I would do something like two gray here, 1.5 gray here, and then maybe one gray here. That way, as the MLCs move, you can see that here they're going to trail and give more dose, and then they're going to be partially covered here, and then even more modulated and covered there. And you can see, you can just analyze that band very easily and really test how good your MLCs are. Next, you, we're going to start talking about actual cases at this point. So let's talk the easiest one, if I could spell prostate. <laughs> let's do a mock prostate. So you put the chamber at the isocenter. You can use film at mid phantom. You actually treat a prostate plan. Next, let's do a mock head and neck. So notice we're getting more difficult the farther down we go. And a head and neck is one of the most difficult cases you're going to treat in IMRT. You could put the chamber at ISO. 
Uh, you put it four CM posterior to the spinal cord and then a film in a few places on the phantom. There's a lot of modulation, a lot of angles, and that's a very difficult task for IMRT and the linear accelerator in general. So if you can meet that, then you're doing pretty well. Another option that TG119 mentions is this uh, she saved dose distribution. So one of the hardest things to do, and if you imagine you have a spinal cord here, and you want to treat all around it, uh, I'll do the, this for dose. If you can wrap dose around something like that spinal cord, that is the most difficult distribution to achieve. So if you can use film and verify this and maybe put a chamber here in the spinal cord to verify it's not overdosed, then you could feel very good about moving forward with your IMRT program. So now this picture to the right, so this is, I think, the most important is called the Van Esch test. I'll type it over or write it over here. Van Esch, that's how you spell it. And essentially, a lot of people just know it as a chair pattern. It's a chair test. So this tests the sliding window and the inverse planning system. So it shows the quality control for inverse planning for the leaf motion calculator and the dynamic MLCs and their performance. So what you want to do is plan, calculate, and measure this chair pattern. And this, as you can see, you can highlight different profiles and a look at the dose. You can see that there are two, two shows the, the profile, or I guess here, we'll look at line one. So line one shows an area of no dose. So you can see if the interleaf leakage uh, transmits. So for example, let's talk, let, I'm gonna draw it here. Boom, boom. Okay, so up here, uh, let's say we analyze this line above the chair. So the chair is the dose that is getting through and everything else is covered by the MLC. So if you look at line one, what I'm gonna call line one here, then you, the MLCs are covering everything. So then you can verify, okay, what's the interleaf leakage? What is the intraleaf leakage? I think that's good. Now, if we do a line two right here, we can see what the homogeneous dose looks like. And so we have MLCs on this side, MLCs over here, but there's a big, nice strip of homogeneous dose. And then uh, profile three shows, which is the most difficult, there is no dose. So we have dose here for one leg of the chair, dose here for the other leg of the chair, but in between the legs, we don't have any dose. This is the most complex and the hardest one to get because the MLCs are really tested in their accuracy. So they want, they just have very small margins. They have to work perfectly in sync and time together perfectly in order to get a nice rigid chair pattern like this, which is why the chair pattern is such a great test. Not only does it measure interleaf leakage, homogeneous dose, and then this chair pattern, if there are any MLC errors, there is going to be a mismatch and you're going to see that in this test and that's why it's so important. So if you have any questions about IMRT or if the chair pattern TG119, please comment below and thanks for watching. Best of luck studying.